What's the reason for adapting an existing property into a TV show or a film? Is it because that sort of story is usually better? There's, a, there's some truth to that. Most of the times when I see something new that I haven't seen before and I watch it, I think this is really good. I go and check. It was originally a novel series or a graphic novel or a comic book or something, whatever. That happens quite a bit. But I don't think that's the number one reason. I think the reason that studios adapt things like The Witcher here is because there's an existing fan base. They don't have to build a fan base up from scratch. So then the question is, why go out of your way to annoy that fan base? Why go out of your way to ignore the source material and make your own thing when the fans are there because of the original source material. Why do that, especially in the lead up? It doesn't make any sense. Is it because, oh no, we just want new viewers, uh, people who aren't fans out there to enjoy this. Then wh why are you adapting something in the first place? Why not just make something new? It's, you know, having, you're taking something popular and twisting it. And I think the reason they do that is because they want to use these popular things for their own personal political goals. We've seen them say that. That's the reason why we've got to we've got to change these existing properties uh, so that we can get our message out to the most possible people because these things are already popular. We're going to change them into something that doesn't even resemble the thing that made it popular in the first place. And why assume as well? that by changing it, it's going to be more popular to people who may just have not heard of it before. Wouldn't it make more sense to keep it like the thing that made it popular in the first place? It's all craziness. None of it makes sense. Well, I mean, if, if you look at it in the terms of uh, people trying to make money and make art, none of it makes sense. But uh, in terms of people who have political agendas and want to spread their social agendas, it all makes perfect sense. Why am I talking about any of this? Well, Henry Cavill, Superman, restated, uh, has just officially announced that he will not be returning as The Witcher. And when I first heard this, uh, as someone who's watched the first two seasons of The Witcher, I thought, good, good. Uh, I really enjoyed the first season. I know nothing about the games or the books, uh, but I enjoyed the first season. The second season was a chore, an absolute chore to get through. It didn't really resemble anything from the first season other than uh, the characters were had the same name. Uh, it was a drag. I did not enjoy it at all. Um, and, you know, we know from uh, a lot of the statements that Cavill has made in the past um, that, uh, yeah, he's not one to uh, dismiss the wants and needs and desires of the fans. Remember this, I played this the other day on another video. I'm curious if that's comparable to this sort of world, this culture of toxic fandom, where like, if you make a movie, especially if you make a superhero movie, it does, like you have great intentions, but there are always gonna be a small yet vocal group of people there can kind of just be toxic. I understand what you're saying, but when it comes to fans, it is a fan's right mm -hmm. to have whatever opinion they want to have. And people are gonna be upset because, especially when it, you're talking about books or games, because you're never going to be the exact person who they had in their head or who they played on Witcher 3, for example. I don't necessarily consider that toxic. I just consider that passionate. And not a small group either. That guy calling it a small group. More and more as we grow, look at all these fandoms. Uh, Marvel, uh, Star Wars, now The Witcher. It's not a small group. Look at uh, Rings of Power. It's the fans that are complaining about what these studios are doing to these uh, franchises to these stories that they love and then turning around and calling you smearing you as toxic when you complain that uh, what you're seeing in, on these things has nothing to do with the, the source material but uh, let's look at this article here it says after three seasons of watching Netflix slowly butcher the story of I'm not even going to attempt that Sapkowski uh, Sapkowski's The Witcher series star Henry Cavill has officially announced that he will not be returning for the fourth. I've just pulled out some uh, interesting parts. You can go read this article. It is over on Bounding Into Comics, written by Spencer Bakuli again. It's my, I think, my, might be my favorite uh, 
journalist over at Bounding Into Comics. He wrote the one on uh, Sandman, I recall. Uh, scrolling down here, it says, Though the loss of Cable is a major blow for the series, particularly as the man not only near perfectly embodied the character but was essentially a walking encyclopedia of series lore, it does not come as any surprise in any way considering the differences in vision for the series held between the actor and the witch's production team what is he talking about there well let me scroll down here uh this is cavill talking i wanted to do it as true to the law as possible for me it was about bringing my love for the character to the show as a fan i want to protect it <sighs> unfortunately cavill was just one man one man standing with his sword staring down an army of uh agenda pushing probably social justice uh, definitely feminist um uh production crew people showrunners saying no this is i will not stand for it asked by the an outlet in december 2021 he says what has changed uh about you prepare for the role in season two oh that's uh, the actor asserted as far as the preparation goes coming into this, I wanted the character to have a closer relationship to the character in the books. I wanted him to be more book accurate. Cracks appearing already back in 2021. Uh, scrolling down here, yet for all of Cavill's preparation, dedication, and love for the series, his dreams of a more book accurate adaptation would never come to pass, thanks largely in part to the indifference of the production crew. As showrunner, the aforementioned Hissrich, that must be the showrunner, has continuously shown a regular disdain for the witch's source material, forcibly injecting her own views on contemporary American social politics, even attempting to sprinkle in some tone-deaf Marvel humor into the fantasy world. And, oh my, it was cringe to the max. It was boring. It was so obvious it was so lacking in self-awareness they're talking about season two here i was just i couldn't believe the drop in quality from one to two uh, according to former witcher writer bo de Mayo, what a name this problem was evidence even within the series writers room as some of the writers were not fans of or actively disliked the books and games some were even actively mocking the source material Again, I go back. Why? Why even make an adaptation if you're not going to take advantage of the biggest reason for making an adaptation, which is the fan base, the existing passionate fan base who will watch it no matter what? Uh, well, they won't watch it no matter what, because if you screw it up this bad, they will stop watching because they will see this is not The Witcher I know. This is not whatever the thing is that I know. This is not... The Lord, of, this is not Lord of the Rings. This is like crazy fanfic, all that sort of stuff. Uh, so it just flies in the face of sanity. Uh, what does this mean for Cavill going forward? Well, he will be playing Superman, as uh, we all know. And yeah, it sounds very much that uh, we have, we were able to look forward to a depiction on screen of a Superman that we haven't seen in a very long time. Something that is more akin to the Superman that the real fans of the character know and love. Uh, here's him talking about it the other day to entertainment, some entertainment group. Right now, uh, I can't really talk about anything. What I do want is hope, optimism, and joy. Those three things are essential for the character. Fantastic to hear. Yeah, fans of Superman uh, love hearing that. Uh, so, yeah, people for the first time in a long time are starting to get excited about some new dc movies just as marvel movies seem to be driving off a cliff because they are uh turning their back on what the fans want and source material and all that sort of stuff uh but let me know what you think are you do you care about the witcher i look i'm i wasn't even planning on watching season three after season two was so bad so now that cavill is out yeah no thanks. Uh, no, no offense to Liam Hemsworth, the other Hemsworth, <laughs> poor guy. Uh, but yeah, look, no, not interested anymore. And yeah, you know, the books and uh, games became popular for a reason. Do you think you're better showrunners than the people who made this worldwide phenomenon called The Witcher? 
uh, with your adaptation? Uh, clearly not. And you've driven away your main uh, your main star here. So uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Comments if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like. Consider subscribing. Please get that bell on. Notifications are a hard thing to come by uh, these days on YouTube. All right, that's it for me. I will see you on the next one. Bye.